The theme of the March Challenge of the Month was called Lord of the Hogwarts, where participants were required to combine the universes of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings in a creative way. But the most important thing is now I have an excuse to bring in my sword. I know I keep annoying you by bringing it in the same way every time, but this time it's relevant because it's Lord of the Rings sword. This is Aragorn's sword. This is relevant. It's relevant. <laughs> G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and the showcase and announcement video is one of my most bittersweet moments of every month because on the one hand I get to enjoy the amazing artwork and talent of so many people who participate, but on the other hand I am limited to only be able to showcase and award a comparatively small amount of people compared to the amount of people who have entered. And this month there's been almost a thousand entries and unfortunately I can't show them all in this video, but I highly encourage you to go check out the link in the card and in the description to go view the slideshow with all of the entries. I had a big old smile on my face going through each and every one of the entries. So if you enjoy this video and some of the pieces I showcase, please go check out the slideshow because there's so much talent I couldn't fit in and include. And the way people have made the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter universes work so well and in such fun ways together is just fantastic. So go check it out. With that being said, it's time to jump into the showcase of this month's challenge of the month, Lord of the Hogwarts. Artist Lord Jim created a piece called We Have So Much In Common, said Harry and Frodo, a depiction of a whole bunch of main characters from the different universes joined together in an almost movie style poster. Graf Whitner created a piece called Show Me Your So-Called Magic, where we can see the armies from Sauron and the Lich King descending upon Hogwarts. You can see the magical shield around Hogwarts struggling and bending under the power of the Lord of the Rings armies. Really epic depiction here. Rise of Joseph's piece Battle of the Wizards depicts Gandalf and Dumbledore in epic battle. I really like the cartoony style of these characters here and the really nice composition and epic poses that they're holding. Jerry Roberts' piece Fire at the Hall of Prophecies is a really nice nod to uh, two parts of the different movies slash books that can join together really well. This piece referencing when Harry went through the Hall of Prophecies and there were these glass-like orbs that he could hold. This combined with scenes from Lord of the Rings where the Palantir is held and creates visions of Sauron's eye. I really like these two subtle references and themes that are mixed so well. Well. Herder HD created a piece called Gandalf is a new teacher in Hogwarts. A really nice and effective mixing of that memorable moment in Lord of the Rings when Gandalf says, You shall not pass! Lawrence Twinkle Seven's piece depicts that one time Harry messed up with the time turner. Not only is this a really fun theme of Harry having gone so far back in time he ends up in the Shire, but also notably this piece is a traditional piece and so well colored with such solid mixes of colors and gradients, it's just a really well executed traditional artwork. Prebola's piece Patronum depicts Frodo from Lord of the Rings with the ring around his neck as a Hogwarts student in the uniform, he's of course Gryffindor because why wouldn't he be, and his Patronus happens to be Smaug. Artsy Carolyn's piece Fighting Against the Odds shows Gandalf and Dumbledore fighting against their respective enemies but this time they seem to be swapped and Gandalf is fighting the wizards and Dumbledore is fighting the orcs. Enjoy Your Life 8's piece Unacceptable Soul depicts Snape trying to take Galadriel away from a looming Dementor. I love Gollum in the background there, and I really like the lighting and atmosphere of this piece, really well executed in a very ambitious pose and scene. Paint Cat's piece, A Thief in the Lonely Mountain, is a really nice mix of two themes from Harry Potter and The Hobbit. We see both Harry reaching out for the egg as if a golden snitch, and of course the golden egg is also a reference to the golden egg from Harry Potter and the Triwizard Tournament, one of the many treasures in Smaug's lair. Sagus depicted a forest whisper. I love examples like this where the artist mixes characters that might not first come to mind when mixing the two universes. In particular we see here one of the Treants and Luna Lovegood, but the whimsy in this piece and the serenity and atmosphere captured so effectively is awesome. And also a shout out to Sagoons who's this is their first entry and for a first entry I am absolutely blown away. You have no reason to be nervous. This is beautiful. So thank you so much for participating. TSS Adams piece Surrounded shows Hogwarts students surrounded by the art Armies of Sauron. I love the really crisp line work style and the very clear and easy to follow composition. 
Victim's piece, the proposal made me laugh out loud because it depicts Voldemort presenting the one ring to Sauron and proposing and it was just so perfect. So <laughs> fantastic idea and a great example of a great humorous execution as an entry to the challenge of the month. Artist Mars Art's entry portal to the Middle Earth depicts Harry Potter having grabbed the port key at the end of the Triwizard Tournament and being transported to where Frodo and Samwise are making their way to Mordor and I like the subtle Mordor glow in the distant mountains and the awesome textured painterly style throughout the piece. Zelor's piece depicting the Balrog versus a Patronus being thrown at him by Harry has a fantastic mix of colours and really well executed lighting and magic effects. And Plucky Cheese's entry for Cottonmouth is another example of a very, very cleanly executed traditional piece with really solid colours and a gorgeous clean cartoony style throughout. Fantastic work. Riley Cattell's piece Aragorn Leads the Ghosts is is another one of those great mixtures in a way that one might not think of at first. That iconic scene from Lord of the Rings where Aragorn is charging into battle with the armies of the dead behind him, but the armies of the dead are mostly from Harry Potter. <laughs> Which is of course famous for having ghost characters throughout the series and of course having, well, you know, dead characters who keep reappearing in the form of memories and ghosts. Roxy's piece Harry v Smaug shows Harry running away from Smaug in a lair full of gold, but the lair full of gold seems to be the one at the bottom of Gringotts. We're not 100% sure if the name of the dragon from Gringotts was ever divulged, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was, you know, Smog. Artist Floppikers depicted the Fellowship of Hogwarts, which depicts memorable Lord of the Rings characters in Hogwarts attire, and I like how you can see them clearly divided into the different Hogwarts houses, which was quite clever. The personality of the characters and the clean illustration style through this piece are both very impressive and really appealing. Emerald Phoenix created a piece called Get Drunk, Not War. I love the jovial atmosphere presented here and the way that both the environment and the characters are crossing the two worlds and the subtle touches throughout this piece are fantastic. In particular, I love Gollum reaching out to the fishies in the middle of the table because as we all know, we love our fishies nice and raw. Fabio Joffrey's piece staff measuring contest depicts Gandalf and Mad-Eye Moody holding their staffs and glaring at each other. I love the simplicity of the piece and the concept, but in particular, I love the character style here. And last but not least, we have a piece by Fondimon, which is a movie poster style image. This has so many cool little cross references in the character designs themselves. Really nicely illustrated piece, fantastic composition and very effective technical execution and painting. So many fun entries and I love the variety of art styles and the range of drama and humour used to mix these universes together. So a huge shout out to everyone who was in that showcase and of course to everyone else who's participated and contributed their time and talent. Now we move on to the prize pool categories. We have two categories in each challenge of the month. We have the beginner category and the open category. Each of these have different prize pools and the beginner category is something people can opt into if they're very new to art or very young. So I'm going to jump into the beginner category's runner-up and finalist, but I want to start off with a couple of fun honourable mentions. We have three honourable mentions for the beginner category. The first is from artist Lucy Badger, who created a piece called Wand is Better Than Ring, where we can see Harry trying to barter with Gollum, both of which, of course, have each other's prized possessions or Preciouses. I love the mood set in this piece and the great amount of contrast between the lights and the darks. Elvis Thomas's piece Burning Hell shows a lot of ambition. We see the fire effects, we see a lot of motion and exciting composition happening here. And of course I have to give a shout out to David X. Smith who entered at the age of seven with a piece called The Showdown of Villains and Heroes. Nothing warms my heart quite like seeing the imagination and hard work of a young person getting into art. So thanks for entering David. And the runner up of the beginning category is artist Listool85 with a piece depicting the two worlds meshed together. We can see Dumbledore and Gandalf in the foreground. In the midground we can see nods to different environments from the Forbidden Forest on the left to the Shire on the right, a Quidditch pitch in the centre and then far in the distant background we can see the towers of both Hogwarts and Sauron's castle. I love this piece and its composition, its simplicity and its charm. Fantastic work. And the winner of the beginner category is artist Jesse Rocks with a piece but the last fight got lost. I love the drama in this piece, but beyond that, the composition is absolutely fantastic. It's so easy to read and so well executed. With a strong foreground and emotion being evoked through the character's face and their scarred expression, to the mood ground where we can see Gandalf overlooking the fallen warriors of both 
Hogwarts students and Lord of the Rings battle-hardened warriors, to the far distant background with the forbidden forest surrounding Hogwarts Castle, which is of course now overtaken and possessed by Sauron. A brilliant entry and a well-deserving winner of the first prize of the beginner category. Congratulations to our beginner category prize winners. The runner-up to the beginner category will receive an item of their choosing from the jazzastudios.com shop, which is a place where I sell my eBooks and photo reference packs and video courses and Photoshop brushes and the RD Games app, just basically stuff that I make that I think you'll love. So feel free to go check it out. The link is in the card and in the description. And the winner of the beginner category will receive a signed copy of my how to draw book, Draw with Jazza, Creating Characters. The beginner category winner will also receive a 5.5 by 8.5 Stillman and Burn Epsilon series soft cover sketchbook, an item of their choosing from the jazzastudios.com shop. And of course, brand new to the prize pool of the challenge of the month, a six month membership on Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an awesome online learning community for creators where anyone can take a class, try a project, or even teach a class themselves and make a little bit of cash on the side by sharing their skills with other people. There are over 14,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, and loads more. And to people watching this who haven't won the prize of a premium Skillshare membership, that's okay because the Skillshare folks hooked everyone up with the coupon code JAZZA2 or the link in the card and are in the description, which will get you two months for free of premium access. Make sure to use that coupon code and check out the link for two months free Skillshare because it's usually $10 a month and you get two free months to try it out and see if you love it. And I think you will love them because I loved them and I was a happy paying customer before they were ever working with the channel in this way. So I can definitely give them a thumbs up and recommend you go check them out for yourself and have fun getting absorbed in two months of free premium Skillshare classes. Links in the card and in the description. So now without further ado, it's time to move on to the open category finalists and the winner and runner up. This month's pool of finalists was really hard to judge and choose the winner and runner up from. However, all of these finalists will receive a free copy of my ebook, Draw with Jazza Fun with Faces. It's a fun guide to drawing faces of all shapes and sizes that I think these finalists will enjoy. It's time for the pool of finalists for the open category of the challenge of the month, followed by the open category runner up and the first prize winner. Artist May My 96 shows Harry looking into the Pensieve and seeing the ring emerging with Frodo within the Pensieve reaching out to grab it from one of the iconic shots in Lord of the Rings. It all comes together so well and is really effective and pretty. This entry by T. Sitzkvaya, I think I pronounced that correctly, is called Fly You Fools and we can see Harry and his friend flying away in the turquoise car from the Lich King. I love the adventure of this scene and the ambition of the shot and I love Mordor and the far distant background below. Also the touch of Gimli on the roof is nice as well. Pukes created a piece called The Two Conquerors, depicting Sauron and Voldemort together with their powers combined. I love a few things about this piece. First of all, they both have very clear and separate aesthetics with Voldemort being much more cold and acidic in color and Sauron of course being hot and heated in his lava-like aesthetic. The composition and the way they both work together is really well executed, but also the style is re really reminiscent to me of Patrick Brown, who is actually one of my favorite artists. And I thought Pukes, oh, I'm probably mispronouncing it. Pu Puekers? I'm sorry, you all pick weird usernames. <laughs> the way this artist pulled it off is absolutely fantastic and has such a clean, solid and attractive style. Fantastic work. Artist Pantherello's entry is called Make Peace, Not That Hero Villain War Stuff. The serenity in this scene is really engaging. I love the mix of colors. The composition with the nice, soft foreground helping frame the piece. The mid ground being full of that jovial activity that we can enjoy with Fred and George in the background making mischief and of course Gandalf and Dumbledore being you know old wizardy dudes together and then beyond that the way they all come together with that gorgeous background and Hogwarts in the distant horizon absolutely stunning. This piece by Brian Forger called Hogwarts The Last Bastion had me checking their reference images quite a number of times just to make sure they didn't photo manipulate to incorporate elements within this image because it's so effectively painted, particularly in the distant environment. The clouds and the landscape are very well textured and pulled off, but the composition of the scene and the lighting are all very well executed. So fantastic work and a really cool mixture of the two worlds. Graham Davies' piece is one of these entries that you could just look at for a very long time 
time to just soak in even a portion of the astounding detail that they've created. So much work will have gone into this piece to incorporate such subtle details. It's so fantastically full of well, carefully thought out, subtly incorporated references to both Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. I'm not really sure I can break down a single area of this image that I could even talk about in a short period of time, but suffice it to say the amount of work this artist put in and the effectiveness of their execution absolutely speaks for itself. And our final finalist is Reza Hales with a piece called Nazgul and the Dementor. I love the painting style of this piece and the way they have such solid crisp edges and mix so well together in the piece. The Nazgul and Dementor look like they're meant to be the best of friends. It's just so clean and appealing to look at and a really well painted piece. And the runner up of the open category is Nunbull with a piece called The Bad, The Worse and The Worst. Such a well presented piece with the eye of Sauron taking up the background, the ring wraith and Dementor joined to help balance the image and then finally frame our foreground character, which is of course Voldemort in the armor of Sauron. Such a menacing gaze and such fantastic painting and rim lighting on the character, attention to detail, crisp edges, there's so much I want to say about this piece. It speaks for itself. Congratulations, Nunball, on being the runner-up to the open category. Congratulations to our open category runner-up. You will be receiving six months free Skillshare premium membership, giving you access to their thousands of courses as well as a signed copy of the 21 Draw Illustrator's Guidebook Hardcover Special Edition, which I will sign because I'm in it, which is nice. You'll also receive a Stillman & Burn 9x12 Epsilon Series softcover sketchbook and an item of your choosing from the jazzastudios.co. Sorry, got a message. Segway Kick, the runner-up of the open category, will also receive an item of their choosing from the jazzastudios.com shop. Did I get back on track effectively? I think so. All right, let's keep going. Last but not least, we have arrived to the winner of the March 2017 Challenge of the Month, Lord of the Hogwarts. And the winner of the open category is Jorong with a piece called Quidditch of Doom. We can see the Lich King in epic battle with the beastly dragon against Harry Potter, who is playing a uh, particularly dangerous version of Quidditch. I love how seamlessly the two worlds of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings have come together in this piece. I love Harry's expression of the motion and intensity through the piece are fantastic and the subtlety but detail of the background are fantastic too from the Lich King in the distance to Sauron's tower also which can be seen upon the horizon. The sense of motion and intensity, the detail in the mouth of the beast and the intense ambition and effective execution is absolutely stunning. Congratulations to our winner. You will be receiving a medium Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. These are kick-ass, top of the line pen and pad tablet. By the way, I forgot to actually mention that the Wacom Intuos Pro mediums that are provided as a prize through the Challenge of the Month have been upgraded since they've been involved in the Challenge of the Month to include the Pro Pen 2. Because now the Intuos Pro series across the board have over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, which includes, of course, the Intuos Pro medium given as a prize to our first prize winner. Aside from 8,000 levels, of pressure sensitivity, the device has eight express keys and shortcuts that you can use for your custom setup, as well as built-in Bluetooth connectivity. It's a thin, highly portable, and extremely professional device capable of all sorts of amazing artistic results. So I highly recommend everyone check out Wacom and their incredible products, especially the Intuos lineup with the link in the card and in the description. I wanna take a moment to thank our sponsors. They are amazing products and services, and I'm really, 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 really careful about the things that I include and share and involve as sponsors and prizes in the challenge of the month, they have to be things that I love and believe in. And these are products and services that I love and believe in. Links are in the description. Thank you all so much for watching and being a part of this amazing community. A huge thank you to everyone who has been involved in the challenge of the month this month. And of course, stay tuned for the next video, which will announce the theme of the April 2017 challenge of the month. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.